Okay, you guys, we have some amazing news. And basically what we wanted to say was we are now sponsored by the amazing Shape Brazil Fitness. Yes, we are so excited to have Shape Brazil as part of the show and also supporting us. Um, Shape Brazil is a Brazilian owned fitness apparel company. Mm -hmm. um, the lady who owns it is called Fernanda, who is an absolute <laughs> boss from brazil and she um has happily agreed to support the show um the the range of clothing wh how would you describe it La um, lauren fun flirty fierce fitness fashion <laughs> <laughs> all of the f's <laughs> it is really um for me all of those mm -hmm. but I I am someone, I love apparel that is good quality. Yeah. Now, living in gym clothes all of the time, we, we, we buy, we throw away, we buy, yeah. we throw away because a lot of the time it's, you don't always get what seems to be advertised. With Fernanda's range, the quality, because mm -hmm. it's from Brazil and they have a um, the, the material, is such good quality. I literally still have the first pair of wow. leggings that I ever got from Fernanda. Uh, the quality is really good. Everything is squat proof. Yeah. They pull <laughs> you in and push you out in all of the right places, <laughs> <laughs> which we love. Um, and like you said, like it's, it is really, the range is, it's really flirty and fun. Yeah. And I love that. So um, definitely head on over and check out Shape Brazil Fitness. Um, we love it, don't yes, we? Like I, I literally do. wear it every single day. Yeah, and the tops are so cute. Everything's mm. really unique. You'll never, let's say you'll never go unnoticed yeah. walking into any gym. Absolutely. And that is pretty cool. So a huge yeah. thank you. So her stuff is really great for obviously training, but photo, photo shoots, shoots, they look so effective in a photo yeah. shoot. And also um, the, she's just great. Like mm. she's so cool. She does sell-offs a lot yes yes sometimes on uh instagram yeah. every friday at i think it's like three o'clock in the afternoon mm -hmm. she'll do instagram sales yeah so, so make sure you check those out um but yeah we're really really happy to have her as part of the show so thank you so much fernanda yes thank you so much fernanda and so happy to have you on board and you guys will see her logo shape brazil yeah, in our videos so make sure pretty you much from now. <laughs> head on over and check her out. I think she is her handle is Shape Brazil Fitness. Fitness fashion. Fitness fashion. There we go. Perfect. We speak fitness <laughs> fashion fluently. Yes. That's her tagline. Yes. <laughs> right, awesome. Guys. Thank you so much, guys. Welcome back to the Buff Bombshell Show. My name is Lauren Lotta. I'm your host and I'm with the amazing Emma Hyman. Good evening, Lauren. <laughs> Hi there, Emma. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I am very good. So uh, today we have something slightly different. Yeah. We're going to do a get to know Emma and Lauren episode. Yes. <laughs> I'm super excited. I'm a bit nervous. You're nervous? <laughs> yes. Why? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what have you got hiding in your closet? skeletons oh no <laughs> i'm gonna put you under pressure okay goody <laughs> <laughs> okay no no so tell us tell okay. us about you lauren because okay. we can tell from the accent <laughs> you might not be from the uk no no so okay long story cut super short my mom is south african my dad is british my stepdad and i moved here a few years ago obviously to do my studies and do all of that but i'm actually originally from south africa whereabouts cape town oh the fabulous cape town wow. durbanville to be exact wine region oh yes very nice what's your favorite wine i do like a shiraz oh i'm very i like the spicy oh nice i do like the reds do they really get you into wine like quite an early age there you know we have lots of wine um uh what do you call them wine tasting wine tastings yes all the time <gasps> every weekend like <gasps> where we live 
there are basically eight wine farms just around us and you it's a five minute drive to each one. Oh wow it's amazing you're it's a so winer good. then <laughs> i like a little bit <laughs> <laughs> let's just say but do not drink and drive no okay. definitely don't do that <laughs> don't if you're in cape town don't drive from wine farm to wine farm not recommended actually at this moment in time you can't even buy alcohol there they've got a ban on all alcohol and cigarettes because of lockdown <laughs> wow cape town is boring right now if you're in lockdown mm -hmm, no super way uh-huh so oh my gosh liquor stores are completely shut off and you can't get anything so the industry is tanking a wow. little bit. Wow, that is insane. I know, Giles is, is very sad. He says he's not going there until lockdown no. is over. <laughs> no, So you moved to the UK I to did. go ahead with your studies, which were? Accounting oh. and finance. Oh. And then I also did a master's in banking and finance. <gasps> How and, did that go? Oh, I, I did really well. I got firsts. I wow. just didn't really like the industry, so. Okay. Um, I, I mean, after I got them, I then went back into dancing and... Ah, so let's rewind yeah. there. Yes. Dancing. I've always kept up my dancing throughout my studies. Like, I was always part of teams, clubs. Um, used to dance, obviously, in clubs and all that kind of jazz. Okay, so here in the UK? Yes. Where Where did you study? <laughs> so I studied at Portsmouth and at Surrey. So I went to ah. two, just two separate places. And where did you dance? Various locations. <laughs> 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 is this a skeleton in your closet you know what i am not i'm just gonna say it i think all oh, dancing is beautiful yeah there you go i don't care like what kind it is yeah no but like you i know, agree like we've done obviously like there's been burlesque they've mm. done club dancing cage dancing mm. everything so oh, like, i've done it all as well exactly so at the end of the day um you know student life and just kind of do your own thing you've got to make that money exactly exactly and if you've got a dance in a cage to do it then so be it I enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> it was cool. Gotta live a little. So I have to sell the shoes now to go <laughs> with it. So I might as well do. <laughs> so danced. Yeah. Uni. And then you decided maybe it wasn't for you. Yes. I really didn't enjoy it. So I was always kind of really conflicted between whether or not I should do stage. And my parents were very much like, you've got to do something academic. Um. And I was just like, it doesn't make me happy. And then in the end, I tried the dancing and I actually made a go of it, but my ankles were just weak, you know? Like if you're not really into it 100% mm. after school or anything, you really, it it becomes a, a bit of a, a loss, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I ended up sort of ankles just not working. <laughs> what was it, a lot of ballet? Was, what's, ballet. Was, 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 your, was yeah. your main style? Body is a little bit different mm. compared to what it used to look mm -hmm. like. But basically ballet and then after dancing was over, I was like, you know what? All cards out on the table. I'm going to get my breast augmentation mm -hmm. and I don't care. So How old were you when you had those? I was 24. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so I was not like that old. Yeah. But like, I was like, okay, I'm going to go do that. And then I'm going to get a normal job, like a normal person. But I needed something obviously to fuel me. Fulfillment. Exactly. And so I ended up going to the gym. Ah, okay. Exactly. So I went to the gym for the, f well, to do some proper training at this point, like what I would consider training. And it turned out that at that point, my friend Kelsey, she was actually doing a bodybuilding competition. Kelsey? Uh, different Kelsey, you won't know. What's her surname? She's South African, Belan. Oh, okay, no, I don't know. So, okay. uh, so I'm actually moved back to South Africa after my studies. And then this was obviously was dancing. Mm -hmm. And then, what was I doing? Yes. You danced. You and went then to the I gym. went to the gym. And then Kelsey was doing a competition. And I was like, you know what? That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm not doing this anymore. Let me try bodybuilding. The show is in six weeks time. <gasps> oh, wow. Such not a good idea. Okay. But the greatest idea that ever happened to me. Because now look where you are. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, a ch huge moment. Like completely changed my life. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it that way. And um, we did this show and I ended up coming third and it was a lot of fun. But my God, if you saw my posing then, Emma, oh. Emma would be in shock. <laughs> Listen, I have been there in my first ever show. <laughs> the posing was not good. Oh, I think we've all been there. I think if you don't have <laughs> bad posing pictures from when you very first started, I think the, the game is very different now. Uh -huh. But what year was this? This was 2016, so ah, August. okay, yeah. So, 
yeah even so there wasn't that much information available on social media Mm -hmm. so uh you you know you're going in blind oh my goodness i went in so blind i just it was hilarious but it was it was so amazing like just getting on stage and like doing that even though i had no idea what i was doing it was just a lot of fun Mm -hmm. it just completely changed everything and then sort of moving a few months forward i ended up coming back to the uk because my parents just wanted to move anyway so i was just kind of moving with my family Ah. and it was mainly for their work and then i ended up doing full-time accounting which you know as you guys know wasn't really my passion but you know you've got to make your own way sometimes you just got to you've just got to do what you've got to do to yeah. make the money and then mm. you can move on to what your real passion is exactly but at that age i think i was also sort of exploring because mm. obviously now it had been kind of a huge gap with the dancing and going back and having to train back in something i was technically qualified in so i had to do it because i felt like you know this is where I'm going to be able to get a a job Mm. kind of thing here in the UK. So I ended up working for a few years in accounting. It was fun. It was interesting. I learned a lot, Mm. but I just didn't really like it. I've never Mm. have. So now we come to 2019 and lockdown happened. And I had left my role about two months prior to lockdown. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go do the full-time PT thing, the full-time coach. And actually I was doing it. And I gave gym classes. It was so much oh. fun. And then lockdown happened. And then I was like, oh, oh crap. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> badly timed from Corona. Oh, yeah. <laughs> badly timed. Or a blessing because it forced me to get buff started. And yeah. it really like forced me to actually just. It's been Take able to, you've completely been able to just really focus on Buff Bombshell, uh-huh. you know, the um, the accessories, the shoes, yes. the accessories, yes. the accessories. We have a cup here as well. Show the cup. Just like everything. And also yeah. this. Yes. Just like learning everything mm. about bodybuilding that kind of like just soaking in as mm. much as I can. So it's been a so, huge blessing. So since you did your first show in 2016, <laughs> then what did you, cause then obviously you competed in 2020. So yes. fill the gap. So I actually haven't done that many shows. I've only done five. So the f- second one I did was in 2017 in August. Uh, it was the Kent Classic with UK BFF. Ah, okay. And I actually enjoyed that mm. one. And um, I then did my next show the following year after in March in Portsmouth, again mm-hmm. with UK BFF. <laughs> Sorry, IFBB. And then again, the English Grand Prix in May. And then I stopped. And then I did another UK BFF show in 2019. Mm-hmm. And that was the worst I ever came in because... Oh. I was just like, I'd moved to London. I'd sort of like done, I was not taking my prep seriously at okay. all. Like this is why you have to be 100% all in with mm-hmm. your prep or not. So I'll, mm-hmm. I'll make sure I show photos. <laughs> um, <laughs> but this is also the time when like after the prep, I kind of ate the 12 box of Krispy Kreme donuts that we, we talked about. We have all been there. And I can't eat another donut ever again. Oh, I haven't arrived in that destination yet. I can't do donuts really? i can never I, mean, I can have a cookie i really want a cookie but i can't do donuts <laughs> someone please send lauren a cookie she doesn't want a box she just wants one, one. This, this since i walked through the door today in the studio emma i just want one cookie none one of this cookie. multi-pack stuff okay? she just wants just one <laughs> because why if you buy the multi-pack would you eat them all i hope not some but a part of me is kind of saying yes yeah I'm human. Yeah, aren't we all? <laughs> so you then, so that takes us up to... And then IFBB last year, which was obviously completely changing the body, completely mm-hmm. changing the posing, the bikini, everything. I had pretty much up until this point, I had learned as much as I can because obviously YouTube has been around now and there's so much more information that's available. Um, but I really sort of honed in after my last UK BFF show to IFBB. I was like, you know what? I'm going to learn as much as I possibly can. And that's also... I was also having this idea in my mind to get buff going. I just right. hadn't done it yet. Mm-hmm. And then when I did that show, I was like, you know what? Now it's all in. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So IFBB is just, is my league. And what's the goal? My goal personally is to definitely improve. I want to compete for a few more years and I would like to get a pro card in bikini. But then I think for me, the time will be to go off stage and I'd like to do more behind the scenes stuff and work on media as well. Mm. That's ah. my 
Yeah. That's my goal. And I have to say, like, you have fully immersed yourself in this industry. You yes. are like an encyclopedia <laughs> of bikini girls. Yes. Like, you really you really do your research. I do. You I, do. I do like to watch everyone. <laughs> yeah. She knows about all of the bikini girls, what they're doing, how their preps go in, mm. uh, which is, I think, you know, if you do want to have a future in, like you said, the mm. media side of it, then that's really important. Yeah. You know? Um, Wow. Yeah. And then part of my, my 10 year plan is definitely to do some judging. Yes. Like for me to be able to judge in an IFBB league, that mm-hmm. would just be the pinnacle. Yeah. Like I would just, that would be in the element for mm-hmm. me. So that is the plan. That is my goal. I'm going for it. She has got the goals <laughs> set. You're, I always say you've got to have like a two year, yeah. a five year yes. and a 10 year plan. Absolutely. Got to have it. And you got to set up all those little mini goals yeah. that lead you up to those big goals. So yeah. just keep ticking those boxes. Oh, well, thank daily. you. Daily. Thank you. Yes. yes. You're very, like, you're very focused. Yeah. And committed. I have noticed that. Thank you. Yeah. Sometimes it's a bit overwhelming, I have to admit. What's overwhelming? I've got to say, like, starting a business is easy. You can start a business today on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Running a business, completely different thing. Yes. And My that's God. why a lot of people... They yeah. don't quite see it through mm-hmm. and they're not congruent okay. because it's hard running your own business. Like it's stressful. Mm-hmm. It is really stressful, yeah. but you're doing your thing. Thank you. Yeah. So we'll see where it takes us. Yes, absolutely. Yes. But now we're going to talk about Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start at the very beginning. So yes, I am. Um, I was a professional dancer. Cool. Um, did my training here in Leeds in contemporary and ballet. Oh. Uh, danced ever since I was three years old. It's typical, danced all the way through my childhood. Never mm. wanted to do anything else but dance. Luckily, my my, my parents were super supportive, yes. always encouraged me to just do what I wanted to do, which was dance. Mm. Um, so was encouraged to go to dance school, auditioned in London, auditioned in Leeds, decided where like, Leeds was where I wanted to be. Um, so did my professional training, graduated and then decided um, okay, I, I'm a little bit bored of contemporary now. I want to do hip hop. No way. So I moved to New York. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> moved to New York and trained with the Hip Hop Dance Conservatory. And when I was there, I was taught by an instructor that had a military background. No. <laughs> so I really learned discipline. Oh. And in that course, they really broke the, the dancers down to almost like rebuild how you thought, how you worked, how you trained, your mindset. Uh, so it was a quite a pivotal point for me in, mm. in my um, in my own personal growth. Yeah. So that was when I was 21. I came back to the UK. So young. Yeah. yeah, came back to the UK, uh, fresh from New York, <laughs> felt like, you know, I had it all going on. Mm. I was like, right, professional dance career, let's go for it. And then I jumped out of a window and broke my foot. Oh my God, <laughs> I feel that. Pain. Rewind, jumped out of a window. Why? What even now I'm like, why did I do that? Was that a night out? No, not even not I was <laughs> sober. I was not even drunk. Everyone always says to me, like, were you drunk when you did that? No. Oh, sober. So I'm I glad was glad you were alive. I know, right? Ironically, I had some really important rehearsals to get to. Oh. And I was a little bit scared of my um choreographer at the time. So I woke up late and tried to leave i was staying with a friend i had like no money i'd just come back from new york so i was staying with a friend and i went to leave the apartment and i was locked in oh. and i was like i've really got to get to rehearsals because if i don't get there she will fire me yeah. so <laughs> i thought i'll jump out of the window how hard can it be <laughs> so i climbed out of the window with my bag on my shoulder and I thought if I hang off the window ledge it cancels out half of the height so instead of it being like 12 foot I thought it's probably about six foot drop okay let me tell you now people gravity pulls you down really really quickly like really quick you there's no pause you got to, from here bam here quick so I landed oh man in a plie oh my god okay yeah and then I rolled. Oh. And then I stood up and I was like, oh, did anyone see that? 
no, no one saw, it's all good. <laughs> Started to walk and then I realized, oh my God, my foot. So long story short, broke my foot. Had to kind of rethink my career because it made me realize that um, if you get injured as a dancer, your career is over. Yeah. So I thought, right, what else do I enjoy? What's What could I maybe make an, a, a career alongside yeah. dancing in? Fitness. Fitness. So became a gym instructor. Nice. So I, I danced, um, I, I did my qualifications to be um, a fitness instructor, worked at a gym. Love it. Constantly, so, and then I kind of, so I did that, became a personal trainer, mm. and they they both, I got to the point, I got fast forward to being about 27, got to a point of where it was a case of, I need to just focus on personal training, mm. or I need to, just not personal training focus on dancing oh. and as i was getting older i kind of realized i need to be a little bit more realistic i need more stability yeah. if you're a dancer do not expect to be rich yeah like you do it because you, you're passionate about it and that's what you love and i had some really great life experiences obviously it's it's massively supported what i do now so i would never ever change that no no no, no regrets but you gotta grow up at some point yeah. So I was like, okay, personal training. So just fully focused on that. Um, built my personal training business. Uh, became one of the best PTs in Leeds. Nice. Had a waiting list, fully booked, all of that jazz. Worked a lot, a lot of hours. Yeah. Uh, and then I got to, um, so around about 27 years old, I thought, maybe I should compete. I'm not gonna dance anymore. Maybe Ooh. this is my opportunity to transfer those skills over to the stage. And a few friends of mine that competed, they were like, yeah, you should definitely do it. Yeah. You know, you'd be really great. You know, you've got the dance background. So 2013 decided 12 weeks time, I'm gonna do a show. <laughs> <laughs> so longer than my one. <laughs> oh yeah. God. So um, all the way through that prep, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do my first show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to win. People are like, are you going to win? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to win. The likelihood of winning your first show was really, really, really <laughs> slim. Really slim. And I hadn't watched a show. Okay. Um, uh, There was nothing, YouTube, Instagram. There was no content on there mm -hmm. in those days. I uh, didn't have a prep coach. Yikes. Didn't have a posing coach. Very <laughs> different. There wasn't. There wasn't. There was Just no wasn't online around. prep coaches. Mm -hmm. It would be like the local at the local gym. Someone would say, "This is your prep. This is what you should do." Oh, On wow. you get. Mm -hmm. So, did my first show. Didn't win. <laughs> didn't even place in the top six. <laughs> <laughs> but I loved it. Yeah. My tan was not dark enough. My bikini was not the right fit. Oh, I did bikini. not have enough muscle. I was not lean enough. Um, my posing was, I looked like a, a really great showgirl. Got it. I know what you mean. But not a great bodybuilder. <laughs> this is shocking. You know, so I was like stood oh. in my lineup, watching the other girls either side of me thinking, she she is posing completely different to me. So <laughs> as a dancer, you could be quite astute on stage uh -huh. and we're like sponges. So I was trying to copy the girl in front of me, but mm -hmm. do it really discreetly. So <laughs> realized that I had a bug for it. Yeah. Um, I got awarded for the best presentation oh. being a dancer. So the posing routine, I was like, okay, this I'm, I'm kind of in the right kind of realm, uh -huh. but we need some work. So for three years, I competed every single season, nice. didn't miss a show, nice. competed in tone figure. At that time, there was only two federations, yeah. oh, UK yeah. BFF and NABBA. If you're in the UK. Yeah, if you're in the UK. So uh, I did tone figure, took me three years to win, had to work my way up the ranks, um, won, won my first show. And then after that, it was like a domino effect. I won a UK show, a British show, a world title in Brazil. Nice. Uh, and then came back and went for the fourth win and i got kicked out of my category what what do you mean you got kicked out <laughs> i'd outgrown the category so they made an example of us and moved like three of us they said you don't you're not toned figure and at that stage it was toned figure or it was the equivalent of women's bodybuilding what they moved me to the women's bodybuilding category you're not big enough for that no no <laughs> you weren't big enough for i wasn't you. big enough and i was not lean enough but oh my gosh hey, so they moved us and then that's when after that I kind of took a bit of a break posing uh. coaching 
was organically growing okay. in the very beginning. And it was really just off the back of the routines right. because females started to come to me because they said, oh, can you help me choreograph a routine? Right. As I was working on the routines, I just naturally had an eye from the dancing Got it. to say, oh, if you maybe, why don't you just try this with your arm or try this with your leg? And that might make your pose look a little bit better. Yeah. And then I was like, Oh, there's something there. There's something there. Yeah. So it started to, to work with more and more athletes and then a more, um, and then it moved out from just, you know, female toned figure women to then bikini girls, to then men's physique, to then men's bodybuilding. And it just naturally just grew. Right, I love it. So then again, yeah. I got to the 30 years old and came to another crossroads where it was like, do I stick with personal training or do I move to posing coaching? Okay. And um, I was working with, um, I have a friend who is um, a mindset coach, um, Rob Latty. Yes. And he, we we had a big chat and, I sa- and he said, let's take the leap, well, let's do this. So mm-hmm. I got my own studio and it was half posing, half PT, but I knew that I was gonna phase out personal training right. and really build the, the posing side of things. So that is when the posing pro was born. I love it. So yeah. just worked all hours I could, decided to compete. So I was like, right, I need to, I need to come back to stage. I knew it would help elevate my business, which yep. is why a lot of people compete. Yes. So I did that. So I moved to a new studio, set up a new business, started a 16, well, it turned out to be a 24 week prep, but started a 16 week prep for a new category, which was figure. So I jumped up a category. <laughs> And that was in 2017, I started the prep, 18 competed and got a pro card um, in PCA, um, athletic figure. Okay. Which was at Body Power, which we have here in the I UK. Like body power. And then the ultimate goal was obviously the IFBB pro card. Mm-hmm. I didn't actually anticipate in winning the pro card in that season. I thought it would take me a little bit longer. Uh-huh. Had a little bit of self-belief issues. Didn't okay. think I was quite good enough to get an IFBB pro card. Oh. Um, did a show, did my first show in Alicante and um, wasn't allowed on stage. <laughs> what? Why would they allow you on stage? I forgot my number. So they were like, you can't go on stage. The head judge said no. Your disc number? My disc not number. Not the NPC number. No, my disc number. <laughs> So they, and I was like, can't I write it? And just to get, go on stage with a written card number? Yeah. No, not allowed. So I'm a little bit defiant. <gasps> so I tried to still walk on stage. Yeah, you prep for it, you might as well. I'm like, I've flown to Alicante, I've paid my entry fee. Yeah. I am gonna try and walk on that stage. You can't write this. So as I try and walk on stage, I've got someone else's number on. <sighs> And the um, the stage manager literally just as I'm stepping on, sneaking on stage, he like pulled me back. And he was like, no. <gasps> no. Yeah, so they didn't let me on stage. Um, which, you know what? I just took it in my stride. It was something that was completely out of my control. Wow. But in the back of my head, I knew that there was um, a two bro show in the UK two weeks later. Wow. Uh, so I was like, fuel to the fire. Okay, two bros. That's my last opportunity chance to get the pro card i am coming Um, and if you're coming to that show you better be ready because i am turning the heat up yeah so came back two weeks hit it hard i knew i wanted to be sharper so i did that and yeah won my category won the overall got the pro card and then decided um I wanted to take some time out mm. to, I knew I had to grow and be better. Oh. And then, um, so that was in 2018, 19, took a whole year out. I worked with JP for my prep, nice. which was awesome. JP and Corinne, such a superb yeah. team. Um, and then business went crazy. The Posing Pro went crazy. So I kind of just thought, now is my time to really focus on business and training and and competing took a real backseat okay. and business took over again it was another decision of do i do i focus on competing or do i focus on business i'm right. at this stage i'm 32 okay so i'm like i'm getting older what are my pro- priorities now do i want to be successful in business do i want to be mediocre or I want to be the best i get you if yeah. i want to be the best i've got to focus on it 100% so right. let's just put compete into the side for now 
it's I've got the pro card, so yeah. it's never going anywhere. So then um, 2020, <laughs> still working on business and then decide to open a gym, move my studio at that current time to the gym, mm-hmm. completely kit a gym out. Yep, Strength Pro Gym. Strength Pro Gym. Uh, so we did that, uh, myself and my partner. And now, and then it was a case of, do I, am I gonna compete again? Do I wanna compete again? Yeah. At this stage now, um, I don't have the muscle that I did have for figure. And I couldn't commit maintaining that lifestyle and that level of training and business. uh, business. You've got to pick one. Yeah, I know. It's really, really difficult. Yeah. So, um, (laughs) yeah. So now the goal is I have a more balance between business. I've got a website for the Pose and Pro. Um, and there's, there's, an, there's an app coming out. So it just gives people far more access and it puts less pressure on me to be in the studio all of the time. Okay. Uh, Cause when it's just you as a business and a brand, yeah. you've got to be working to, to, to make, you know, to, yeah. to earn your money. That's so the, like the beginning stages, you are everything. You're the advertiser, the marketer, you're the accountant, everything. you're the everything. When I, when I was crazy. in prep for, um, for the pro card, uh, my life was get up, cardio, work in the studio, uh, do like up to 10 sessions a day, yeah, posing. Yeah. Wow. Then go to the gym, do my lifting session, come home, eat, mm-hmm. do whatever chores I need to do. And then it was sit down on my laptop. Didn't have a website at the time. I was building the website. Mm-hmm. Answer emails, inquiries till like maybe one, two in the morning. Right. Go again the next day. Yeah. Go again the next day. It's <sighs> intense. It is. It's a lot. I feel for you. Yeah. So... I'm kind of grateful for me personally that the corona has happened for me at this point. Yeah. But I can totally see how busy you were at that point mm. with everything. Like I, I have a lot of admiration for you Aww. doing that. Thank it's you. Big. It's, it's, it's just one of those like how badly do you actually want it? And mm. I wanted both. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> it was like, okay, give up all of your life and just focus on that, which it was perfectly timed. I was able to do that. But now... Um, Businesses more balanced. Mm-hmm. Um, now we've got the gym. Uh, so now I'm starting to think, and obviously I did some, yeah. um, I did a year of, when I took a year out, I also did a year of judging for PCA. Oh, yes, yes. Which again, helped elevate so business, trained my eye even more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm constantly like watching, learning, and the more athletes you work with, the more your skill mm-hmm. improves as well. So, um, so did that also, We uh, myself and my friend Michaela, we guest posed for a solid year. Wow. So we you, we brought the dance into the posing, so we combined the two. Yeah. Um, so now it's the case of, yeah, business is still pushing forwards. Good. Um, diversifying, obviously, with the Buff Bombshell show, which is <laughs> awesome. Like, I love having this platform and doing this with you. Thank so you. thank you so much for this mm. opportunity. No, thank you. And then, yeah, I guess the, the final question is, people always say to me, <laughs> When's the pro debut? <laughs> I don't know. Like we talk about the bikini category a lot. I'm not figure anymore. No. Um, to come back and compete, it would be bikini. Nice. Um, but I want to make sure now we really critique this category. Yeah. We really know what's expected. Like with all the proportions mm. and what is like required now, mm. I am definitely on a mission for bigger booty. I yeah. think we all are, but every chance I get a hip thrust, I am doing that. We. Oh, I mean, hip thrusting into 2021. That sounds so ridiculous. Kickbacks, but... hip thrusts, sumo <laughs> squats, all of that stuff. Like, yes, I know exactly what you mean. And I think um, bikini will, like, you'll look beautiful in bikini as well. Thank you. And so it's I the one wait. category. It's like, I do the most <laughs> posing coaching with it, but I've actually never competed in bikini. Yeah. So I'm like, let's tick this off. Yeah, might as well. And maybe by the time I'm 34 now, Maybe by the time I get on stage, I'll be 35. So I'm like, can I compete as a master? I think you can do whatever you want. Is there like a pro bikini master's category? No, not in IFBB. (laughs) Damn. (laughs) I think like... So that means I got to get in the mix with all the young guns. Not for pro. When you're pro, you're pro. Exactly, I know. You can be with everyone. Exactly. So... So Emma's got a workout out for when she does her pro debut. I, got, I can't wait. I got to be on that stage, a 35-year-old looking like a 25-year-old. You look beautiful. Well, well, 
We'll bring it. I've got to say, we'll the 25-year-olds aren't actually bringing it. I wish they like, bring I just, it. I think it's just because there's just so much more out there now mm. that once you sort of lock onto this, if you can learn as much as you possibly can like you know what laura lee was saying like mm. learn about every aspect of it once you sort of hone in on it you're there mm-hmm. like there's so there's so much content available mm. now i mean if i had available what i have now it probably would have taken me a year to win not three years maybe would you still have done figure or do you do you think you would have done bikini first i think i would have done bikini because i would have been more successful you see it's so it's so interesting mm-hmm. to see how people um, just your different categories. It's so interesting. I yeah. love it. But, yeah. Wow. yeah. And I think as well, when I start it, when you start, because there's not heaps of information out there, you kind of go where you're navigated to. And okay. that just depends on who you're surrounded by. Right. Um, so yeah, in hindsight, I would have done bikini. Okay. And then maybe taken a different route. But yeah. hey, this was my journey. This is my route. And it's brought me where I am. So yeah. I think that's awesome. No regrets. And no you should regrets. Not, no regrets because everything you do leads you up to a certain like point in your life mm-hmm. now. And it's how you determine or what you do next, which is going to determine the, the path. The outcome. Yeah. Absolutely. The outcome. That's how so so yeah, yeah, that's just, that's the journey. Yeah. I think my story is somewhat personal. <laughs> Shoot. But that's okay. We tell it all here. So that's fine. But no, I hope you guys got to enjoy learning a little bit about myself and Emma and how yeah. we got into this. Obviously, yeah. you can see like two very different sides, but still with a sort of a common passion for dancing. Mm. And I just, um, it's been interesting. Yes. Both, both with yeah. interesting stories and journeys. So, yes. Yes. To awesome. the next 10 years. Oh, Lord, I'll be 44. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, Definitely. and also to add to that, definitely would like to judge. Yeah. If I don't compete, I yeah. think I would I would push towards judging. Yeah, absolutely. So I that just would be a nice girl. Imagine. Yeah. It's like so awesome. Put so it out there into the universe. We are going to make it happen. Yeah. So you guys, that is Emma and Lauren episode. Yeah, I hope you guys <laughs> enjoyed that. If you didn't, don't put any bad comments. And also, if you need any like hot topic questions, and you want us to actually go over some sort of I don't know. If there's any subjects that you actually would like us to talk about that we haven't covered, yeah. definitely drop it in the comments because we want to talk about what you guys want to hear. So yeah, as much as possible. Yes. Let us know. Okay. You guys make sure to like, follow, subscribe, follow MD Muscular Development on YouTube. Please make sure to go follow Emma Heinemann, the posing pro on Instagram, and myself and Kaleem and the whole team. Make yes. sure you follow Buff Bombshell. <laughs> everyone in the team thank you so much for watching okay, guys, guys and we'll see you in the next episode bye bye Okay, you guys, another set of shout outs and this time going to Emma's. Yes, my first shout out is mindset and performance coach, Rob Latibodier. He is actually my own mindset and performance coach. We work together, uh, well, we started working together in 2016, just before I won my world championships. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we continue to work together on business, on competing, on lifestyle, just normal everyday things as well. So he's massive on your mindset, NLP um, approaches, cognitive behavior, and just really being able to understand and con- not control your mind, but knowing how to use it best. Nice. Um, overcoming your limiting beliefs, your fears, oh. things that might hold you back. And it is really great for, especially, you know, when you're in prep for a show, we all have those moments of doubt, putting those aside. Uh, So he works with a lot of athletes um, and he he gets really great results as well. But he just really teaches people to understand the mind and how it works and how you can really, he takes you from where you you are Mm -hmm. to where you want to be. Nice, I love that. So definitely go check him out. You'll find him on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, myself and Rob have actually done a podcast series. Yes. Have you listened to it? The mindset one? Yeah. I've listened to one or two. Yeah. Um, 
But you guys, you haven't done one for a while. Well, <laughs> well is it because of lockdown? No, we're just <laughs> both so busy. Like we we started in 2018 doing uh, weekly live shows okay. on Instagram, which they were a real big hit. Yeah. So then we were like, let's do a podcast series. Nice. So we did a, a series one, which again was a hit. It's called Success, Lifestyle and Laughter. And you'll find it on iTunes and Spotify. Um, and it was awesome. But then we just never got on to series two. <laughs> <laughs> but he's wicked. Like he's got so much going on. Yeah. He gives so much good informative content on just, you know, confidence, mindset, champion mindset, which is really important when you are prepping for a show. I love it. So go check him out. Everyone could do with a little bit of mindset refocusing. Absolutely. I think. Everyone needs it because yeah. you know what? Everyone's got issues that are holding them back. Absolutely. And that's what he really focuses on. So you guys, please go check out Rob Letty on Instagram, R-O-B-L-A-T-T-I. Yes. The Mindset Coach. Awesome. So over to you, Lauren. Who is your next shout out? Okay, well, this is probably going to be no surprise, but my shout out is Team Angelica. So Angelica Teixeira, actually, um, she's doing coaching, but a little bit more now. Um, so she's taking on more clients and she actually just started her coaching business um, to a slightly bigger scale. And, you know, I want to support Angelica, mm. so I'm just going to give her new coaching business a big shout out because I think she deserves it. Yeah, there you go. absolutely. She was on the show not so long ago. Yes. And she said that she's opened things up. She's opened her um, her diary up almost for mm -hmm. more, more athletes to work with. She only works with a, a small number because she wants to give them the best service possible. Yes. Um, so... That's what she's doing. She just really seems like she enjoys helping people yes. achieve their goals. Um, so yeah, definitely head on over to her page. Ooh, glute workout. Oh yes. Is that one we're gonna add to the gym? Oh, we like those ones. <laughs> I do those already. So <laughs> we the like landmine ones. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I think yeah. she also looks after lifestyle. Yes. Just she does everyday a lot. lifestyle as well. So not just uh, competitors, but also just people that just want to be. Yes. The best version of themselves. Absolutely. So you guys, that is Team Angelica. Please um, also go give her a follow. And if you want some coaching from an IFBB bikini Pro. Time Olympia champion, then please go follow. It's a no-brainer. Team Angelica. And you guys, that is it. Awesome. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure you like, share and subscribe. Drop the comments. Let mm -hmm. us know what you think of the show. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Thanks, guys. Bye.